Good morning. I'm North Hudson Town Supervisor Ron Moore, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all here for today's event. Before we get started, there are a few special guests I would like to acknowledge. Please join me in wel welcoming Chairman of the Essex County Board of Supervisors, Bill Farabee. Chairman of the <laughs> Chairman of the Hamilton County Board of Supervisors, Bill Farber. <laughs> Town of Minerva Supervisor, Steve McNally. <laughs> Town of Indian Lake Supervisor, Brian Wells. Town of Long Lake Supervisor Clark Seaman, <laughs> Deputy Supervisor of the Town of Newcomb, George Cannon, <laughs> Town of Wilmington Supervisor and Vice Chairman of the Essex County Board of Supervisors, Randy Preston, <laughs> Department of Environmental Conservation Acting Commissioner Basil Segos. Executive Director of the Nature Conservancy, Mike Carr. <laughs> Owner of the Elk Lake Lodge, John Ernst. <laughs> Conservation Fund Advisory Board Chairman, Jason Kemper. <laughs> and CEO and Executive Director of the Adirondack Mountain Club, Neil Woodworth. And of course, we are thrilled to be joined today by our great governor, Andrew Cuomo. Over the past five years, we've seen this state adopt a remarkable focus on the needs of the Adirondack Park. Governor Cuomo has been leading the charge alongside the Nature Conservancy and his commitment to both protecting open lands and growing the economy has had a positive impact on our region. The governor has also led the way in combating climate change and preserving the state's treasured natural resources by bringing funding for the Environmental Protection Fund to a record $300 million. So, so I'm excited to hear what he has to say. And I look forward to continuing to work with the state, other local governments, and advocacy groups to protect the beauty of the Adirondacks for all New Yorkers. Thank you. Now I would like to introduce the Keene Town Supervisor and Essex County Chairman, Bill Farabee. Thank you, Ron. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the governor and his staff for uh, inviting me here today. It's a great spot, and uh, I couldn't wait to get here this morning, actually. Um, again, I'm Bill Farabee, Chairman of the Board of Supervisors for Essex County and also the supervisor of the greatest town in Essex County and probably in the state of New York, the town of Keene. <laughs> we have no bugs there. <laughs> the Adirondack Park is home to an unparalleled natural, natural beauty and some of the nation's best outdoor recreational opportunities. But beyond its majestic views and pristine forest, the park also serves as the economic engine of the North Country and continues to drive tourism to the region. And the proof is in the numbers. In the past six years, tourism-related employment has jumped nearly 8%. Tourism spending is up 10%. Visitation to the park alone, an increase of 15%. And today are, we are building on a pr progress to continue to attend more, to attract more people, well jobs, bigger businesses to our communities for generations to come. The state partnership and commitment to the park will pay dividends for the region, and I'm proud to be part of the good work that we are doing here in the Adirondacks. I look forward to the continue, continuing the collaboration with our local partners to keep the momentum moving forward and to preserve the state's treasured natural resources for our residents, visitors, and tourists alike. So with that, I would like to introduce now a good friend of mine, uh, one of my constituents in the lovely town of Keene, um, 
would be welcoming to, uh, to welcome the Executive Director of Nature Conservancy, Mike Carr. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. What, what a great honor to be asked uh, to be present today. I very much appreciate the opportunity. And this is such a perfect setting for the governor to celebrate this wonderful conservation success. We're on protected land here. John and Margot Ernst, who own Elk Lake Lodge, in 2012 donated to the people of New York State a conservation easement protecting all 12,000 acres here. And in 1963, they donated the first ever conservation easement in New York State, a thousand feet around this beautiful lake, Elk Lake. The forests around the world are under increasingly intense pressure, but these Adirondack Mountains and pure waters that flow from the central characters in one of the world's most promising forest restoration and recovery stories, and with New York State's purchase of Boreas Ponds, our Adirondack story, all of our Adirondack stories, keep getting better. The state's newest addition to the Forest Reserve does not just benefit nature. Its natural beauty will bring joy and opportunity to people. This park, the Adirondack Park, was established in 1892 to protect water quality and forest health, both of which were in rapid decline from unsustainable logging. In size, the Adirondack Park can swallow the Grand Canyon, Yosemite, Yellowstone, and Glacier National Parks combined. But that is not altogether a fair comparison. The lands inside of this six million acre park are a mixture of public and private, protected and unprotected, large forests and small towns like North Hudson. As these forests have recovered, moose, American marten, and other wildlife have returned. Conservation at this scale is about connections. The waters of Boreas Ponds, just as the waters of Elk Lake behind us, flow into the Hudson River. They provide a natural tether between the Adirondacks and New York City. Boreas Ponds is the crown jewel of the 25 Adirondack parcels totaling 69,000 acres that New York State has purchased from the Nature Conservancy in the past four years as part of a larger project that is also conserving 95,000 acres of woodlands for continued sustainable timber harvest. In any landscape around the world, the opportunity to protect 300 lakes and ponds 90 mountains and 415 miles of rivers and streams would be compelling. In the Adirondacks, the ecological and social significance of these places is amplified by our unique history. Thanks to more than 100 years of conservation action, this is among the top three most intact contigu contiguous areas of temperate mixed forests left on Earth. This project under New York State and Governor Cuomo's leadership is another step in keeping connected a sweeping landscape ranging from alpine summits to lowland forest, creating pathways for plants and animals to adapt and move in response to a changing climate and allowing forests to store carbon, which mitigates greenhouse gas emissions. When all is said and done, conservation success depends on good stewardship. It requires constant cultivation of values, and experiences. That's why as places like Boreas Ponds right next door become available for recreation, the Conservancy is pleased to assist in the removal of the remaining structures and proud to provide an additional three quarters of a million dollars in seed money for recreation-based economic development projects related to these new state lands. We look forward to continuing our partnership with DEC, through which we previously provided a half million dollars in grant funds to establish the Upper Hudson Recreation Grant Program. Those funds have already been deployed to support 15 projects here in the North Country, ranging from upgraded lodging to new business startups in the communities surrounding these lands. This kind of investment is just as important as buying land for preservation. It strengthens the, the links between conserved lands and communities that host them and people. 
including millennials, who seek adventure, solitude, and authentic experiences in wild places. <clears throat> and with that, in this spectacular setting, and before the black flies eat us alive, it is my great honor to, to introduce a true Adirondack champion, Governor Cuomo. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, it is my pleasure to be here. You couldn't have a more spectacular setting uh, anywhere on this globe. Uh, and as you know, the Adirondacks have always been a special place for me before I was governor. Uh, going back to my childhood, uh, some of my fondest memories are here. And I have been so excited, frankly, about what we've been able to do together uh, to actually make the Adirondacks stronger and better uh, than before. To Mike Carr, who's done a great job with the Nature Conservancy, let's give him a round of applause and thank him for everything he does. To my friends and colleagues, Ron Moore, it's a pleasure to be with you. Let's give Ron a round of applause. We have Bill Farabee. It's good to know there are no black fires in Keene. I didn't know that until you mentioned that. I don't know where I was when I was at the sign called Keene and got bitten, but I don't know. Bill Farabee, who's been a great friend and a great champion, and a really outstanding commissioner of the EC Basil Sagos. Pleasure to be with him. <laughs> to the Ernst family that uh, is very kind to allow us to be here today, we thank them for that. But more than that, they have been great stewards of the land. They've been great stu uh, citizens of this state uh, and maintaining not just this lodge, but their generosity and the easements they've given to the state, the precedent they've set. Uh, they really uh, deserve our thanks and praise as good citizens. Mr. Ernst and your family, thank you so much for having us here today. This is uh, one of the exciting beautiful uh, and historic days and announcements what we're doing here today. We're completing the largest acquisition to the park in over 100 years. Just think about that. Uh, the Adirondack Park, which was a jewel to begin with, we have actually enhanced. We're completing a 69,000 acre purchase uh, with the Boreas Pond track at 20,000. As soon as we sign that document, it will be complete. And the Boreas uh, Ponds tract is not just 20,000 acres. It is, and I don't want to get into an argument with the Ernst family, but uh, <laughs> the Boreas Ponds are one of the really, like uh, Elk Lake, one of the really magnificent parts of uh, the Adirondacks. Uh, I have had the pleasure of uh, being there, and it is, it is truly spectacular. Functionally, it also uh, adds to the park and to the usability of the park. The 20,000 acres solidifies the ownership and the uh, integrity of the High Peaks uh, region overall. Also, when you combine the uh, Boreas Ponds track with the Casey Brook track, it actually links the high peaks with the Dix Mountain wilderness. So functionally, practically, it's a very intelligent purchase, which is going to be solidifying an entire region for a long time to come. The way we did it, I believe, preserves the balance between preservation and economic development. And I understand the tension and I understand the passion on both sides. Uh, I've been coming here for 30 years. I don't think there's been a, a, a moment where uh, someone hasn't come up and passionately made the case for total preservation. Uh, and you turn around and someone passionately makes the case for economic development and we have to open up the region. Uh, the passion is what makes uh, the park special. Uh, and the answer, obviously, is balance. You need to preserve the park because it's the right thing to do morally as a citizen. 
And you need to preserve the park because it is the asset that is attracting people. Uh, at the same time, we live in economic realities. Supervisors have to balance budgets. People have to pay taxes. Children have to go to school. School bills have to be paid. Uh, so the way we have executed this transaction, I believe, achieves that balance, both on the preservation side and the economic side. Uh, the state will continue to pay the property taxes and school taxes for these parcels that are being preserved, so they won't be coming off the rolls. That's why you see the supervisors smiling today. Uh, the tax revenues will be continuing. As you heard from Mike Carr, the Nature Conservancy and the state are going to work together with a $750,000 community development grant because there will be additional tourism opportunities. There will be additional economic uh, opportunities if we do this right. And tourism is a phenomenal economic engine for the park, for the state overall, and for upstate in particular. Uh, but it has probably been the most successful economic development venture that we have undertaken. Because the park and upstate New York overall, nobody has told the story of upstate New York and the park. Uh, you know, see, the, the park is almost a hidden secret, right? If you know about it, you almost don't want to tell anyone else. You want to keep it to yourself. Uh, but upstate New York is magnificent. The park is magnificent. And there are tourism opportunities. We boosted the I Love New York campaign way up. Uh, we came up with some very creative events, the Adirondack Challenge that we do every year. Uh, and those those uh, efforts have actually increased the attention to the park and driven the tourism. Tourism is up 15 percent. Tourism is now a 100 billion dollar economic engine for the state of New York. Uh, and tourism in many ways also helps both ends of the spectrum. You preserve the asset because that's what the tourists are coming to see and the tourists bring economic development, so it's working. Also remember, we're not doing this in a vacuum. Uh, we have had a very comprehensive plan for the North Country, for the park, that we are now five years in. And we have been very aggressive about it. And one of the things I can say after five years of being governor, unequivocally, there has been no state administration in modern political history that has been more committed to the North Country and the park than this administration. And when you look at what we're doing and the synergy that is combining among all of these initiatives, it really is impressive. Yes, we did 69,000 acres, the largest conservation parcel in 100 years. We've also been doing, with the Regional Economic Development Council, with Gary Douglas, uh, Tony Collins, more economic development than ever before. You have Plattsburgh that is creating jobs, Trudeau that is creating jobs. Uh, you have development in Saranac with new hotels and new restaurants that I believe are going to revitalize that area. We've revitalized order, which is doing a great job all across the board. The statewide broadband can do more in a single initiative for the North Country than anything else because you need the broadband to make all of it work, the tourism, et cetera. Uh, the water infrastructure, the $300 million in the Environmental Protection Fund because we have to stop uh, the denial. Uh, we have to stop the denial about climate change because we do have climate change and we do have extreme weather and it's getting worse and it's not better, getting better. And unless we do something about it, uh, the crisis will only get worse. And that's what the $300 million for the Environmental Protection Fund is all about. So uh, we feel very good about it. The achievements are combining and there is a synergy, but this one today is special. And you know, as governor, uh, through a government, as a society, we get to do good things once in a while. 
Uh, we get to build a road. We get to build a bridge. We bet get to increase funding for education. Uh, we get to help people. And that makes changes for five years, 10 years, 20 years sometimes. Once in a rare while, you get something, you get a chance to do something that makes a difference forever, forever, that literally leaves our children a place that is better than the place that we inherited. And as a society, as a society, I think that is the ultimate goal. Uh, that, when, that when they call you uh, to question, and the question is, is the world better for you having been on it? And did you leave this place a better place than you found it? And did you would improve it for your children? If you can answer yes, then you win the game. The old Indian proverb, we didn't inherit the planet from our parents, we're borrowing it from our children. Today we know we are leaving our children a better North Country, a better park than we inherited. And that, my friends, is the greatest accomplishment. Uh, an accomplishment that you feel in the places that really matter. It's not just an intellectual accomplishment. It's not just an economic accomplishment. It is a moral accomplishment. And today, I can tell you, because I can hear it, the soul of the state of New York is singing because of what we did today. Congratulations. Let's sign the document.